In the action thriller, The Rock, stars Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage break into Alcatraz prison. Their mission, to stop a group of disgruntled Marines from launching lethal nerve gas missiles at San Francisco. Yeah, I want pressure, that's what I want. Give me more pressure. Come on. Director Michael Bay and producers Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson, who collaborated on Bad Boys, teamed up again with the intention of blowing the audience away. I'm a very visual director and, you know, I demand the most of what my film should look like. I want it to be something that places the viewers in places where you're not really privileged to see. I like really involving the viewer and getting right in there on the action. The film's first signature shot will come at the climax of a destructive chase through the streets of San Francisco, where a cable car is blasted 20 feet high, engulfed in a spectacular fireball. The film crew has blocked off a section of street, and the cable car is positioned over two hydraulic rams, which will launch it into the air. Bay chooses seven different camera angles from which to cover the explosion. With the cameras set, the street is cleared, and the crew members take their place. Ready and action! After successfully completing the cable car explosion, Bay turns to visual effects supervisor Hoyt Yateman and DreamQuest images in Simi Valley, California. We were called upon really pretty much toward the end of the production to fill in that whole bottom area with fire and to remove most of the mechanical rigs that were used to actually do the stunt. Yateman and his digital artists duplicate the existing flames captured on film and position them beneath the cable car. The result is an explosive moment that sets the film off and running. But this is only the beginning. Bay is saving his best shots for later in the movie. The film's finale will rely heavily on digital technology. The script calls for five F-18 jets to come screaming over Alcatraz and drop one bomb as Nicolas Cage desperately tries to call them off. Michael told us what he wanted to see. So we took that information and we brought it back here to our stages at DreamQuest and re we recreated the San Francisco Bay Area and took cardboard cutouts and did a video animatic, which is basically a moving storyboard. Michael proved that. Next, the crew shoots a stand-in for Nicolas Cage, signaling with flares. This becomes the background plate to which computer-generated, or CG, F-18 jets will be added. Using an off-the-shelf software program called Alias, digital effects supervisor Dan Delu creates a simple wireframe animation of the jet's flight trajectory. You'll start with the jets far away, and you just block in the basic motion of what the jets do. As the shot progresses, as it evolves, you start putting more and more subtle movements into the jets, the sense of weight as they accelerate into the climb, um, the chaotic nature of a shot like this when they all peel off. In these early tests, the jets appear to fly through Cage's stand-in rather than over him, but they accurately portray the path of the planes for director Michael Bay's approval. 3D artist John Murray is in charge of rendering the final F-18s. He works on a single jet, which will later replace each of the wireframe aircraft in a given scene. We went and we photographed a full-scale mock-up of an F-18, which is the, the jet that's used in the rock. And what that gave us was kind of a template to draw from, because all of the uh, individual panels were all drawn out on this jet. Murrah starts with the wireframe. He takes the wing of the plane and brings it into a program called Studio Paint, where he applies texture from photographs of the mock-up. And here is our wing texture that we brought in. So we can actually go and apply that to the geometry itself, so actually kind of laying it on like a sheet. To further enhance the illusion of reality, Mara looks at the wing from every angle and decides where to digitally paint in weathering and dirt. The fully rendered jet is ready to replace the wireframe aircraft in the shot, 
the animators add exhaust trails, and the finished scene heightens the tension of Bay's explosive finale. For the second part of the sequence, the crew starts with an aerial background plate of Alcatraz, photographed from a helicopter at 2,000 feet. In order to get the proper scale and angle for the pyrotechnics, Yateman employs the tallest construction crane in Los Angeles. Gasoline bombs will be exploded on top of a 70 by 70 foot blue screen as the camera is rolling from a height of 170 feet. The blue will later be digitally removed in the computer, leaving only the explosion to insert on the plate of the island. The film is sent back to Murrah at DreamQuest, where the images are composited or combined. The digital artists apply interactive lighting to simulate a shock wave on the island. Once the animation is approved, the fully rendered jet takes the place of the wireframe replica. As a final touch, the DreamQuest team adds rippling exhaust heat waves and a reflection of the explosion in the pilot's canopy. I think we get excited about the shots as much as anyone else does when we look at them and we kind of get into it and say, let's make this the coolest thing we can, you know. So I think it's positive energy that makes them exciting for us. And um, I think those moments are the ones that we kind of live for. Hoyt Yateman and the team at DreamQuest Images have used a palette of visual effects to compose the rock spectacular finale. And their work of art is on the screen. Gray smoke, we have gray smoke. Aboard. 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 Aboard.